So we have to answer this last question for Wendy's and McDonald's, which is um, to interpret them in the context of the situation. So at Wendy's, we expect to wait 1.39 minutes, but give or take 0.738 minutes to place an order. Whereas at McDonald's, we expect to wait 1.39 minutes, give or take 1.265 minutes to place an order. Note that this means that McDonald's has a more spread out, i.e. less reliable, more variable um, wait time than Wendy's. In um, gambling parlance, we call it volatility. We would say that when McDonald's has, is more volatile. Um, it's got more risk. So you, you might get less wait time than Wendy's, but you also might get more, whereas Wendy's is more consistent. In other words, Wendy's wait times are more consistent and McDonald's are more volatile. Alrighty. And that's what those numbers show us. It's not their means are different, right? They both had a mean of 1.39. It's that Wendy's is more consistent, has a smaller spread than McDonald's. And that in a nutshell is what standard deviation shows us. It is the average amount of spread that your data set has. And that can be interpreted all sorts of ways. And before I head off of this, just realize how important this is. We have found a number that measures spread for us. That is a big deal. That's a huge deal. Because in real life, nothing is ever exactly the same. So we need a way to measure how variable it is, right? How up and down, and plus or minus it is. And that's what standard deviation does for us. And then we're able to compare standard deviations from different data sets and make judgments about who's got more variability, who's got more volatility, i.e. those are the same thing, and who is more consistent. All right. Now let's look at this example, which has some pictures in it. And I have the standard deviations for these data sets right here up at the top. So these are the S's for these data sets. And your job is to figure out which one's which. Now I'm going to zoom out so we can see all six of them together. All right. Now, if you look at them, a lot of them look like they're symmetric. Number two, three, four, and six are all symmetric. One and five are skewed, but one and five are like the same picture as each other. It's just that one is facing left and one is facing right. One has a skewed left, one is skewed right. Or five is skewed right, I should say. All right, so if you look at these numbers, which ones of those could be the same? Well, if you look at the 1.64, see how there's two of them? That means that two of the pictures in this group have the same amount of spread. Well, it's got to be 1 and 5 because 1 and 5 have the same spread. It's just that they're spread in different directions. One spread left and one spread right. So this one right here, I mean, in fact, I'm going to put it up here at the top just so you can see it. Hold on. So this is graph number 1. And this is graph number five, or vice versa, because it doesn't matter that they're the same, they're the same number. Right? Now again, why is that? Well, because they had the same spread as each other, but one was spread one way and one was spread the other. But standard deviation doesn't measure direction. Standard deviation just measures spread overall. Okay? And if that's the case, then you totally have that with those two graphs, because those two graphs were the same as each other. Hold on one second. Okay, now out of the four that's left, that are left, we have all of them centered around a middle. So the middle is where the center is going to be for every one of these because they're all symmetric. So who's got the least amount of spread? Who is most close to that center and least spread out? Well, that's number two, right? Number two, everything's packed at the middle, very little bit in the tips. Who's got the most spread, the most out in the tips, the least in the center? Well, that's number six right here. See how everything's off in the edges for number six? So he's got to have the biggest spread. So the 2.66 is graph number six. All right, that leaves us three and four. All right, one number is bigger than the other. So one of these has more spread. And the answer is graph number three has more spread because there's less in the center, more out on the edges. Graph number four has got a lot more going on in the middle, which means it's got a smaller spread from that middle. The more spread out from the middle it is, the bigger the number, like six. The more packed into the middle, the smaller the number, like number two. And then one and five are the same because they were identical to each other.